Hi, my name is Ed Minger, and today I'm introducing you to an idea called the Washington State Ten. The Washington State Ten would be an elected research group that is designed to take controversial and complicated issues and slow down work through the challenges before it officially goes to the legislators, where it will officially become a law. To start with the why, why do we need this? We have some shortcomings in the legislative branch of our government, and this is everywhere, but Washington included. Those are the folks that write our laws. One challenge is that we've overworked them. In a two-year session, our legislators propose about 4,000 bills. That works out to about 25 bills per day that they are in session. 25 bills a day. And of course, much fewer of them become law because they just ain't no time. Plus, some of them are probably bad. Um, to show you another complicated thing about being overworked, I'm going to do the train analogy. Okay, so this country was designed with its three branches, and this state was designed with its three branches. Let's go country because of the timing of everything. When this was all devised and designed, we didn't have trains. There were no trains, which means there were no laws regulating trains, which means nobody had to decide if they're going to have standard rail spacing, which means nobody had to decide what safety equipment was going to have to be required, which means nobody had to figure out if there was going to be a speed limit, which meant nobody had to figure out, and the list goes on. In this country, we are free to innovate first and legislate second, invent something cool, and the legislators will react by coming up with some things that make sense, some regulations hopefully that, that make trains run on time, run safer, make it so every train fits on every track by having standard um, spacing. Make sure that if somebody invents something that means that the people putting trains together don't lose fingers or arms because there's a new safety piece of equipment, like the legislator would have to look at that and say, okay, do we force every company to buy that safety equipment? Do we subsidize companies so they can buy that safety equipment? Do we just let companies decide to spend that money out of the goodness of their hearts? We don't know, but we're going to have to come up with a rule, some guidelines, some guidance. This ends up being very reactionary and very confrontational because if, for whatever reason, it costs $10 to operate a train last week and the government says, okay, now you got to buy safety equipment, so it's going to cost $12. I don't have $12. What am I going to do? Okay. So it becomes reactionary, confrontational. And the other part of that, confrontation and challenge, our legislators have too many masters, so to speak. Number one is you. There are 140,000 people in your district represented by a single state senator. That state senator has to please all 140,000 of you to the best of their ability and do the most good for you primarily. But what that means is we have situations and challenges that affect different districts differently. And the legislators don't actually have to listen as much to the problems of other districts. So that's why you don't often hear an urban Democrat talking about water rights in Eastern Washington, because they don't have to confront that challenge together doesn't mean they shouldn't listen about that, but it's just not at the forefront of their voters' minds. Same reason you might hear somebody elected in Eastern Washington not talking about the importance of gun safety regulations, okay? Because it doesn't quite speak to their audience, right? And it doesn't affect many parts of Eastern Washington in the same way that it affects parts of urban Washington. Some of these folks, some of these elected legislators, they raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to run advertising, to get access to you, to get their name out there, to get your vote. Um, and now they have folks to please. They have donors that they have to give preferential access to. It doesn't mean they have to do everything their donors tell them to do, but it means they're likely to have a meeting with somebody that donated to them as opposed to somebody that did not. Even endorsements can come with certain expectations of having extra meetings or doing right by the folks that endorsed you. Political parties have platforms that these uh, members of the party have to uh, do their very best to live up to some of the platforms. Otherwise, the party might decide that somebody that's further right or less right or further left or less left would be a better person to back. And so if they decide that, they can say, hey, here's the most up-to-date call list for your campaign. Go call these people. These are the folks that are more likely to switch their vote to you this time. Um, not that that would ever really happen, but probably could. Awesome. And then we have a primary system where you have to narrow down your choice for every office to one. Even though you might approve of 36 out of the 37 people running for governor in this election, you still have to narrow it down to one. 
Okay, so this is going to restrict a candidate's voice. Instead of trying to reach as many people as possible and listen to as many people as possible and make proposals for as many people as possible, they are going to try to find a narrow niche that they can fit into so they can get as, as many single votes as possible. Okay, and with approval voting, which is in a different video, um, we would be able to check the box of everybody we approve of. We'd end up with a lot of centrists that also have to listen to the outskirts of their party. Awesome. So too many masters. Too many masters. Awesome. It is our duty, your duty and my duty, to address these problems. It isn't fair to them that they have all these folks to please, and it narrows down what they're able to get done. And it's not fair to us that they have all these folks to please and all this stuff complicating their job. We have an increasingly complex world that they are reacting to and trying to make laws to address our challenges. There's conflict between the masters of each legislator, right? They have to do constant campaigning and fundraising on top of the 4,000 proposals that they hear each year. They have to go get money to run advertising to get access to you, and it doesn't have to be that way. And they also have to solve all of the big problems and all of the small problems. They have to do day-to-day -day government function and make big, beautiful reforms, right? And beyond that, technology could give you more voice, could give you more voice, but they don't have time or the freedom to hear us and respond to all of us. It's not fair to them and it's not fair to us. So how do we solve it? We create the Washington State Pen, an election, an elected research group. So this group would slow down on the big issues. They would take input and they would create compromises on hard issues. This would be representatives from each district. One to two is my thinking on this. Each of our 10 districts would get one to two representatives. So this Washington, they would create revised proposals on one to three big issues, controversial issues per year, slowly. They would still have to give it to the legislature who would then have to make it official. Okay, so this group wouldn't have the ability to pass laws. They would just make laws slowly, publicly, and betterly. Cool. Technology is going to give you a voice on each draft that the Washington State 10 takes a look at. You're going to be able to highlight a word or a sentence or a paragraph, and you're going to have to you're going to have the ability to give direct feedback on that piece. You're going to say, I'm an expert in this, or I own this type of business, or I work in this industry, or I'm in this part of the state, and here's how paragraph B would impact me, positively or negatively. Representatives of all the stakeholders could be heard on challenging issues. So if you represent different groups, or if you have different um, lobbyists, and another video addresses that lobbying has nothing to do with money, um, but if it's your duty to go and talk to government and you're sort of an expert in something, there's going to be time to meet with all of you and figure out where there's overlap and how we can all come together to do the most good for the most number of people. No, you will not get everything you want. That's fine. You'll be hurt. So this could handle, this group could handle taxation, education, transportation, environmental regulation, new projects, respond to new challenges. Okay, this would have, this would be a group that could do this stuff slowly and transparently. The intended results. Better legislation on hard issues. Okay, this group would be able to do a, a decent compromise on some of these things slowly and publicly and then give that over to the legislators. There'd be better legislation from our official legislators because they would still operate basic government function, okay? But they would just not have to focus or shut down everything else they're trying to get done so they can focus on really challenging things every once in a while. Let the challenging stuff happen in the background, but publicly, while the current government pulls out the pencil, this is a pen, but instead of using it to always write new stuff, take a minute, they can slow down, go erase some rules, right? Go and merge some programs, go and do some things that are going to make government more efficient and make new, better things. Also, like, you have more time to do both of those things. Less gridlock less controversy because this research group doesn't have official power to pass laws. Their job and the success of their job and their ability to get reelected and keep this job and say, look how good I did. Their ability to compromise, listen, and make good deals between the different stakeholders and the different groups of people in our state. That's what they're going to be judged on because if the law is imperfect, it's going to go to the legislator and they're going to say, mm, it doesn't work for whatever reason. I don't think that'll happen very often, but 
think good legislators could say, no, we just don't like it. We want to do it ourselves. Okay, that's on them. Okay, more access. So if you're an expert in something or your industry or you know a lot about your place of work or whatever it is, um, you would have access to this group as they do things that affect you. Stakeholders in a situation. So for transportation, that's a really good one. Transportation and the environment, we're all stakeholders, right? We all move stuff around. We move ourselves. We go to stores that have things. Um, transportation and the environment affects all of us. So we could all have an opinion on that. I do have a question though. Should this be 10 or 20 people? I think having the top two in an approval voting setup from each congressional district um, would do one more thing. On top of all these things, you could have two voices, leading voices, people that earn a lot of approval in your district. These could be leading but divergent voices. Okay, so you might have two people that appeal to a large number of folks in your district, first place and second place. Um, but there's a good chance they are slightly different, have a slightly different mindset, even though they share a district. Okay, so those folks would be able to work together within the district and get all of your voices and everything heard and then meet in the bigger group the washington state 10 districts 20 people awesome and then solve problems you know what i mean solve problems together awesome my name is ed maker um i'm running for secretary of state i refuse to purchase advertising that's one of the kind of the shtick of this election refusing to purchase advertising saving people a bunch of money but what that means is i need you to share things okay so if you think this is a decent idea go tell somebody about it if you think you want to tell somebody about it but this video is too long you get to narrow it down and you get to sort of translate it however you see fit to your friends your folks your family people you care about within this state but please consider on august 4th voting for ed minger independent for secretary of state of washington to so sort of give your legislators permission to do some of this cool stuff okay you vote for me that gives them permission to do cool stuff that's it awesome thank you so much and have a great rest of your day